Zemo! What's going on guys, it's Zemo, and today I'm gonna teach you about turn structure in Yu-Gi-Oh! Turn structure is the flow in which players conduct their turns throughout a game. Each player's turn is broken down into six phases. The draw phase, standby phase, main phase one, battle phase, main phase two, and the end phase. Let's start with the draw phase. The draw phase is the first phase of your turn. During the draw phase, you draw one card from the top of your deck. If you cannot draw a card during this time, you immediately lose the duel. Now after you draw, players have the ability to activate quick play spell cards and trap cards before moving into the standby phase. Both players are allowed to use quick play spell cards and trap cards that were already face down on the field for one turn. And the turn player is allowed to use quick play spell cards from their hand as well. It's important to note that the player who goes first does not draw for their draw phase of their very first turn. Now before we move on to the standby phase, it's important to mention how both players need to agree to move into the next phase before doing so. Now most of the time, players move from phase to phase without needing to ask their opponent if this is acceptable, because in the context of the game, most players understand what's going on in the current game state. However, especially in a tournament environment, declaring your phases is very important for the communication between players. Usually your opponent will give you a simple head nod or vocal cue, indicating that you may proceed with the next phase. Next is the standby phase. A majority of the time, this phase is often quickly passed over. Similar to the draw phase, players have the ability to activate quick play spell cards and trap cards before moving into main phase 1. However, some cards have effects that activate or maintenance costs that need to be fulfilled that occur in the standby phase. For example, let's take a look at the continuous trap card Imperial Order. It reads, negate all spell card effects on the field. During each of your standby phases, pay 700 life points or destroy this card. So during your standby phase, you are required to pay 700 life points. If you choose not to or are unable to pay the 700 life points, then Imperial Order is destroyed and sent to the graveyard. Now next is Main Phase 1. Main Phase 1 is where a bulk of your turn will be spent, as you can conduct many different moves. During Main Phase 1, you are allowed to normal summon one monster, you can flip summon and special summon as many monsters as you want, assuming you're following their card text properly. You can change the battle positions of monsters from attack to defense mode, or vice versa, once per monster. You can activate the effects of monsters. You can activate spell and trap cards. And you can also set spell and trap cards to your side of the field. Now from main phase 1, your turn can flow one of two ways. You can either proceed to the battle phase where your monsters can battle your opponent's monsters, or you can proceed directly to the end phase, which will end your turn and begin your opponent's turn. The player who goes first is not allowed to conduct their battle phase on their very first turn, and from their main phase 1 will transition directly to their end phase. But in some cases, even if a player has monsters on their field, they might not wish to attack due to the circumstances and can proceed directly to the end phase. But for now, we'll transition and talk about the battle phase. The battle phase is where your monsters can attack your opponent's monsters and even attack your opponent's life points directly. I'll be going into much more in-depth detail with the battle phase in a later video, but the most important thing to note is that each monster is allowed to attack once per battle phase. Similarly to the draw phase and standby phase, both players are also allowed to use quick play spell cards and trap cards during this phase as well. Now if you conducted your battle phase this turn, then the next phase is main phase 2. Almost identical to Main Phase 1, Main Phase 2 allows you to perform all of the same actions as Main Phase 1. However, there are some exceptions, such as if you normal summon a monster in Main Phase 1, then you cannot normal summon an additional monster in Main Phase 2. Also, if one of your monsters attacked during the battle phase, then you cannot change that monster's battle position in Main Phase 2. And finally, if you used a once per turn effect during main phase 1, you are not allowed to use it again during main phase 2. Finally is the end phase. The end phase is the last phase in the turn before the opposing player begins their turn with their draw phase. Some cards have effects that activate in the end phase. For example, let's take a look at Bujin Yamato. Its effect reads, once per turn during your end phase, you can add one Bujin monster from your deck to your hand, then send one card from your hand to the graveyard. So once you enter the end phase, you can activate and resolve the effect of Bujin Yamato. 
Also during the end phase, if a turn player has more than six cards in their hand, then the turn player must discard cards from their hand to the graveyard until they are only holding six cards, as Yu-Gi-Oh has a maximum hand size limit of six cards. Finally, similar to many of the other phases, both players are allowed to use quick play spell cards and trap cards during this phase as well. Once everything has been resolved in the end phase, play is passed to the opposing player who draws for their draw phase and goes through these phases just the same. I hope you guys enjoyed this video about turn structure in Yu-Gi-Oh! And if you did, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more in-depth content on how to play Yu-Gi-Oh! See you next!